live on camera. Ready? Sexy guy interview. Take one. Uh, my name is Christian Grauser. I'm the owner of Jerry's Records, uh, which is located at 2136 Murray Avenue in uh, Squirrel Hill. We are a all-used record store that sells uh, LPs, 45s, and 78s. Uh, my name is Josh Cosby. I am the owner and operator of the Government Center here on East Ohio Street in Pittsburgh's north side. My name is Max Terrasaro. We've been here 40 years, so we've been buying records for 40 years. So that's why there's a ton of records. I mean, we have a warehouse across the street and over there also filled with records. I started the store with about 8,000 records of my own. And uh, some of those are still hanging around. We get new records every, every week that come from a variety of distributors. Uh, record distribution is kind of a mess these days. I came into owning the store by uh, working here for uh, about 10 years under Jerry Weber, the original owner. We get here, or I get here usually, I don't know, nine, sometimes earlier. Um, we open at 10. Um, usually, I, I'm, most of my, what I do is I price records most of the day. Um, and then, I mean, among the other more menial tasks of running a business such as bookkeeping and whatnot. I would say my average day is an unaverage day. You know, I, I may end up going to three different places around Pittsburgh to look at the collections. We get calls of abandoned, uh, you know, stores or large lots or houses full of records. I mean, we travel across the state. We buy anything from a few records at a time to, uh, 10 to 15,000 at a time. Uh, some days I stay here and, uh, you know, I may be um, going through overstock or doing new stuff. You know, whatever is called for, I do, which keeps this job fun. It's, it's always uh, something different. It's never just, here I go again, you know, ch -ch -ch robot stuff. It's always something different for me. I love helping people find the records they're looking for, you know. If I'm in the store, I'll do that, you know, and uh, that's always fun. That, that never gets old. My goal was to, was to start a record store where conversations could take place around music. Record stores, I feel, play an important part in, um, you know, Pittsburgh, well, in any city, but, you know, we, we are in Pittsburgh. Um, record stores are a great, or a, a necessary, um, way to you know learn and uh discover and you know uh, play music i mean it's it can be more economical than other formats there's definitely the the personal relationships you build with customers and there's only so much you can really learn from like a suggestion from an algorithm on on the internet right like whatever Pandora or Spotify might recommend you. It's, it's you know, I, I find the human interaction part of it is infinitely more important and, you know, useful because, um, you know, because of that relationship you build with the customers. When the shutdown came uh, March 15th, I think, uh, you know, like everybody else, it was, it was a real, it was surreal and you sort of didn't, I, I can remember that first Monday that everything was shut down, kind of walking up and down the street and trying to convince myself that it was really happening. Le leading up to the shutdown, you know, it was, I don't know, obviously something, well, it, yeah, it's, people started to worry about it, to worry about it. And then eventually, uh, what was it, mid, mid March, I forget, but yeah, then we pretty much had to shut down. I mean, it's a record store. It's not a, you know, 
it's not a multi-million dollar operation. <laughs> it was tough. I mean, we tried a few different things. I tried to have people continue to work, even though the store was closed for the first week or so. You got to sell stuff to make your money. You know, you got to hustle out there. Basically, I, I, I kind of laid everyone off temporarily, but continued to pay them, um, you know, reduced salary for, um, for, for the two months, basically, that we were shut down. Um, which, you know, I, I feel fortunate I was able to do that um, because, we, you know, we did have a little bit of savings or something which kind of helped us get through those two months. We, I mean, I made the decision at that point in time, we only had two employees who each worked one day a week. And, you know, we just said, uh, well, they can keep working if they want to and we'll find stuff to do. So uh, we, you know, we did... We just did whatever needed to be done in the store for, for the first week or so, cleaning up, organizing. Anything where people, it may be contaminated just in case, you know. So we did a pretty good overhaul on that. And then at first we started just doing um, service to people's cars if they were looking for something. But that didn't really take off too much. So that hurt business. And then as things loosened up, you know, we started letting a few people in at a time, X amount of people, you know. And we were basically able to open uh, up in the yellow phase, which I think started on May 15th, so. Uh, it's It's been different, but it's been manageable. So we have a limit on people that can enter the store at one time. Um, we started with 10, then we moved it to 15, and now it's 20, which is still a very conservative number considering the the size of the place. We have hand sanitizer, you know, about, like as you enter. Uh, we, we encourage people to wash their hands or at least sanitize their hands upon entering because being a used store, there's obviously like, you know, hundreds of thousands of things to touch. We have customers that bring gloves. We offer gloves. We have masks. We offer masks. We do not let anyone in without a mask, of course. Thankfully, you know, our, the people who come to our store are generally not the kind of people that we have to argue with about that. We have been able to kind of resume business, you know, not where it was. They want their music, they want their records, you know, they want to keep living life. But we do our best to make it all good, you know. We really try. If you're a music lover and you really love it, you want something physical, something tactile. I mean, the artwork, you know, the, uh, the physical feeling of the record. I mean, there's a connection to it. If you're just looking at it on your phone, how are you connecting with it? With a record, you're looking at the artwork. You're looking at the people who played it or whatever they have. You got the big lyric sheet, you know. And uh, I think you connect to the music more that way, 100%. I think, I think that the common thread that gets people buying records rather than you know just listening on a on a streaming platform or you know watching the, what they want on youtube is that it's deliberately anti-technology the sound which i do i personally think is superior to other formats um it's, it has a warmth to it and you know uh it just sounds different, right? I think um, if you're a music lover, you know, uh, disposable music isn't really what you're into. Like, you know, to me, a download seems like I need this for the weekend. It's like a pair of shoes or a shirt that you're in a, that's like trendy for a minute, you know? Record stores in kind of a post-COVID world, assuming we, we get there at some point, but also as regards lots of businesses, uh, I think there's a lot of factors at work that are conditioning all of us to be even less social and less outgoing than we were. And those are the same factors that encourage us to spend our money in ways that give us less and less control over the world around us go have a conversation with people, uh, you know, um, ask for recommendations and, and take them when people give them to you. And, uh, 
and, and do all that good stuff. Because honestly, if we don't, you know, we're going to be left with, uh, you know, uh, buying all our stuff from Amazon and eating all our meals at Chipotle when, when this is all done. So that's all.